I think the first time that I became conscious of craft was in reading those, the early stories of Hemingway. So I was about 14, about 15 years old. I was a sophomore in high school, and I had the stories of Nick Adams I got out of the library. And I started reading these stories, and as you remember, the Nick Adams stories start with a boy, he must be nine or 10, and they move through his, his adolescence, and he becomes a soldier, and then he comes back, he's wounded. And so the stories have this kind of novelistic um, structure. But the sentences are very, very beautiful and short and kind of elegantly chiseled sentences without any exposition. Um, there aren't any long paragraphs where people are thinking. I've, I've gone on to teach those stories so many times to students. Like Indian Campus's first published story, I think, and that's just beautiful short paragraphs with very clear sentences telling a story that's ultimately somewhat of a mystery story. Somebody commits suicide and you can sort of figure out maybe why he does but it's not, it's not obvious, you know. So you read the whole story and then you read the ending and it's just a perfectly poised work of art. So when I was about 15 years old, those stories made a tremendous impression on me. And so I would write stories and have these enigmatic endings, you know, like the era's unresolved ending, which I was like 15 years old. I was sort of working, working with that. Well, I've taught Indian camp and I've looked at other versions of the story and it's shocking to me that in one of the versions, oh, I mean in one draft, there's a paragraph you saw where... saw other drafts of it? I saw that Hemingway had had some flashback, that Nick Adams was remembering having gone to church like the week before, and that is so weird and so out of place. You know, like he took that out, and it's really good he took that out because this makes it like a different story. When you take out that exposition and background, the story is much more mysterious. But when you put that in, which most of us do in our writing, we do put the background in. It becomes more realistic, you know, it's, it fleshes it out, but at the same time it loses that, that grandeur and it's kind of skeletal scariness. And Hills Like White Elephants is the same way, these short paragraphs, um, virtually no exposition, just people talking. And so if you put a lot of paragraphs in there and make it longer, you'll make it in some ways more interesting to know where these two lovers come from, but in other ways you're losing, you're losing a lot. So that was my, fr my introduction to the craft of fiction was reading the short stories of Hemingway, and I still have a great love for them. But then the next person I read after that was Faulkner. And of course Faulkner is exactly the opposite. Faulkner has very, relatively little dialogue and his long, long, long fecund paragraphs of sentences and adjectives and, and syntax that's all kind of jumbled. And so I went from one extreme to the other extreme when I was about 15 years old. So I like both ways of writing and they both influ have influenced me.